Hello my dear audience and respected members. So you Taki Shiraz is here before you to discuss the topic analysis of covariance in R software and SPSS. Let's go towards defining the analysis of covariance. Before defining the analysis of covariance, we must have to discuss the analysis of variance in order to make a connection between these two techniques. In analysis of variance, we can compare more than two groups or more than two populations on mean of a single variable under study. Here, we have only the one variable that is the variable under study in analysis of variance. For example, comparing five insecticides for plants on mean height. Here, heights of plants is a study variable. Definitely, the heights of plants are after applying the five insecticides. So, here is an important point to be noted that these post-treatment heights may have a relationship with the pre-treatment heights. And if these two variables have a relationship between them, then the results of ANOVA will no more be meaningful. Then the results of ANOVA will no more be real. And this pre-treatment height variable is called covariate and the post-treatment heights is our study variable. So before proceeding towards the analysis, we have to incorporate the effect of covariate. We have to incorporate the effect of pre-treatment heights. The second example is comparing four types of medicines for the patients of BP on mean diastolic blood pressure. Diastolic blood pressure is a study variable and again this variable is the diastolic blood pressure after applying the four medicines and this post-treatment blood pressure may have a relationship with the pre-treatment blood pressure and this pre-treatment blood pressure is called the covariate and the post-treatment blood pressure is called the study variable. So definitely we have to remove, we have to adjust the effect of this pre-treatment blood pressure before going towards the analysis and the technique that deals with this type of analysis is called analysis of covariance. With the help of analysis of covariance, the comparison can be made by adjusting or removing the effect of covariate. Here I am going to demonstrate the data entry method, the data entry format for both the techniques analysis of variance, analysis of covariance in order to make the concept more clearer. One way ANOVA. For one way ANOVA, we have to write the two columns. First for factor, that is the fertilizer and second for the study variable. In the factor column, we will write the names of our treatments and in the study variable column, we will write the data and the treatment names will be repeated with respect to the replications of the treatment. Here the three treatments have the three replication. Treatment A have three replication, treatment B have three replication and C also have the three replications. Here the term one way ANOVA means the one factor that is the fertilizer and in two way ANOVA the term two way means the two factors that is one factor is fertilizer and second factor is concentration. So in two-way ANOVA, we have to write three columns. First two columns are for, for the factors and the last column is for study variable, is for entering the data, is for entering the response. So go towards the one-way ANOVA. Here again the term one-way means one factor, that is the fertilizer here. And other two columns will be written our study variable and for the covariate and in two-way analysis of covariance the term two-way means the two factors fertilizer and concentration and other two columns are for our study variable and for covariate. So analysis of variance allows to compare one variable in more than two groups and analysis of covariance also allows to compare one variable in more than two groups but taking into account uh, to correct for variability of other variable called the covariate. Analysis of covariance combines one-way or two-way ANOVA with linear regression that is called the general linear model GLM. Here are the assumptions of ANOVA. First three assumptions are same like the assumptions of analysis of variance. First is the independence assumption means the observations must be independent with one another. They must not have the autocorrelation. 
Normality assumption means the observation should follow the normal distribution. Homogeneity assumption means the groups that are being compared in our analysis must have the equal variances. And the fourth and fifth assumptions are specifically for analysis of covariance. The linearity assumption, the relationship between the covariate and the dependent variable, that is the study variable, must be linear. This relationship must not of any other form, that is the curvilinear or quadratic. Now, the homogeneity of regression slopes, the B coefficients for covariate must be equal among all subgroups. I am demonstrating uh, this assumption in this slide. Suppose we have four medicines to compare, then the relationship between the study variable and the covariate will be analyzed by executing four regression lines. First regression will be executed for control group, second for new medicine, third for O medicine, and the last regression will be executed for a placebo. And as a result, we will be given the four regression slopes B1, B2, B3, and B4. This assumption says that these four regression coefficients must be approximately equal, must be homogeneous. Here is an example that will be applied in our software and SPSS. A pharmaceutical company develops a new medicine against high blood pressure. They tested their medicine against an old medicine, a placebo and a control group. The company wants to know if their medicine outperforms the other treatments. Do these participants have lower blood pressures than the other after taking the new medicine? Now, post-treatment blood pressure is known to correlate strongly with pre-treatment blood pressure. This variable should therefore be taken into account as well. We'd now like to examine the effect of medicine while controlling for pre-treatment blood pressure. We can do so by adding our pre-test as a covariate to our ANOVA, this now becomes ANCOVA. This analysis basically combines ANOVA with regression. The relationship between pre-treatment and post-treatment blood pressures could be examined with the help of simple linear regression because both the variables are quantitative. Here are the statement for null hypothesis of ANOVA and ANCOVA. For null hypothesis ANOVA, we will write all the population means are equal and for ANCOVA, we will write all population means are equal when controlling for covariates. In our example of pharmaceutical company, H0 will be written as average post-treatment blood pressure are equal for all treatments when controlling for pre-treatment blood pressure. Now go towards the second video of the playlist in order to watch the analysis of covariance in R and SPSS. Keep on watching my videos and subscribe my channel. Thank you very much.